Welcome to Uncommon Knowledge. I'm Peter Robinson. During a long and distinguished career at the State Department, Charles Hill served as an advisor to Secretaries of State Henry Kissinger and George Shultz. From 1992 to 1996, Ambassador Hill served as a special consultant on policy to the Secretary General of the United Nations, Boutros Boutros Ghali. Now a fellow at the Hoover Institution, Ambassador Hill is also the diplomat in residence at Yale, where he teaches a year-long seminar, Studies in Grand Strategy. Ambassador Hill is the author and editor of a number of books, the most recent of which is Grand Strategies, Literature, Statecraft, and World Order. Charlie, thanks for joining us. <clears throat> Glad to be here. Segment one, grand. What is grand strategy? Distinguish <clears throat> grand strategy from strategy. <clears throat> grand strategy is knowing where you're coming from, where you want to go, and taking everything into account. Uh, it's a matter, in some sense, of education. <clears throat> and that's what um, this book, in some large way, is designed to do, is to address the gap in education that we've seen for the last couple of generations because of the social sciences in some large sense. <clears throat> Political science uh, will cut down the, any problem to a small corner of it because you have to be scientific in how you answer it. You have to do it in a way that's replicable. Right. <clears throat> so students uh, come to a great university and they want to do big things. They want to answer big problems. They want to run for the Senate. They want to be CEOs of businesses. And they find themselves being pushed off into a corner of a problem and told, you can only work on this little thing here because that's my right. project. So that's not the way education was uh, in the Victorian era or even in, in America in the early part of the 20th century. But it's been lost, largely lost, during the upheavals of the 60s when the curriculum was changed and things got smaller. As, as our American involvement in the world got larger and our concerns around the world became high politics, our education was shrinking. So a bright student arrives at Yale or Stanford or University of Chicago or Oberlin, you name it, and understands a, a perceptive 18 or 19 year old that he or she has grown up in what is for reasons of history or fate top country that America has large responsibilities in the world and then this same student gets uh, introduction to political science and finds him doing regression analyses on voting patterns to predict what a member of the House from the southeastern corner of Kansas might vote on an agriculture appropriation. That's, that's the kind of the argument you're making here. <clears throat> yeah, that's the exactly. The sense of sweep and meaning, the narrative of history is gone. <clears throat> yeah, that's exactly right. <clears throat> we found, when we began to, the two or three of us who put this program together, about 10 years ago, uh, we were realizing that students were voting with their feet. They were coming to the college they were going into political science because they thought, well, they would learn about politics, high politics. They found that they were not, and they were moving to history right. because in history, you can't shut out uh, the bigger picture. So we then have, however, found that in, in history, history, too, was being constricted or it was <clears throat> distorting because of another factor that is connected to grand strategy. And that is that historians know everything. And they are looking at a problem after the fact, and they have all the documents and all of the data, and they begin to pronounce upon what happened back in World War II right. or at the beginning of the Cold War, when in fact the grand strategist, the president or secretary of state or defense, in 1947 couldn't know all of those things. That fool George Marshall, didn't he know didn't Mao he would know? win? Yes. Right. And if the answer is he didn't know yes. Mao would win, he couldn't have known. So we want to teach grand strategy to recreate the reality of what a leader actually does when you have to make a decision before you can know what all of the ramifications are going to be. Charlie, let me quote to you from your book, Grand Strategies, quote, the modern international state system was launched in 1648. Boy, are you specific. 
with the Treaty of Westphalia, by the mid-20th century, the Westphalian system had reached every continent. Close quote. Now, we're shooting a, a video here. We don't have time to reproduce much as I feel the urge to want to take your, your seminar. We don't have time to reproduce the seminar. But as briefly as you can, what begins with the Treaty of Westphalia, and why does it begin then? <clears throat> it begins then because that's the end of the um, Thirty Years' War. And the Thirty Years' War, which ravaged over most of Europe, Central and Northern Europe, was a hideous war. It began to be seen as the first really big war in which civilians were part of it. And something had to be done about this. The legal scholar, the Dutch legal scholar Grotius, began the idea of laws of war then because of the feeling you had to have some kind of constraints on warfare to stop this kind of craziness in the, in the sense of brutality everywhere you look in, in warfare. So Westphalia, 1648, is the, the treaty that sort of brings that to an end. But then they saw that this was a kind of line drawn across history. They didn't have full understanding of this when they were doing it, but nonetheless, they put into place something that is a remarkable idea. And that is that there should be an international system and that it should be procedural, that is not substantive. <clears throat> this is a huge idea. It means that you can have whatever substance you want to have in your country. <clears throat> you can have a political system that is X or Y. You can have a religion that's right. Z or A or B. <clears throat> but when you come to the negotiating table, leave your substance, leave your religion at home. And we'll just talk about the, the procedures of how we get along with each other.